Hello and welcome to another one of Sporty's how-to videos. Today we're going to cover how to configure the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and we're going to configure this for a commercial two-engine jet. I'm going to go ahead and configure it for the exact same way that Honeycomb presents the two-engine commercial jet liner. Uh, you'll notice Lever position one is going to be for our speed brake or our spoiler. Lever two is not in use and covered. Lever three is throttle one. Lever four is throttle two. Lever five is not in use and is covered. And lever six is going to be our flaps. All right, so we'll begin on the home page and we're going to head on over to the options tab and then we'll go to controls and get started on configuring this piece. Alright so we've got our Bravo throttle quadrant selected in the upper right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close all the current commands and you'll see we're at our default setting which is for uh, multi-engine general aviation aircraft which means first two levers are throttle second two levers are prop and uh, third two levers are mixture so we're gonna go ahead and start by clearing all of those commands out that way uh, we're not giving any false indications or messages to the system so I'm gonna clear this input and you'll notice it asks what do you want to save this profile as well as we mentioned we're gonna go ahead and confirm or uh, configure for commercial two jet engine so we'll just go ahead and type that in and that way we can easily come to this setup or configuration uh, for our honeycomb bravo throttle quadrant all right and as you can see commercial two engine is now the subcategory for our bravo throttle so we're going to go ahead and continue to clear out the commands for both throttle, propeller, and also for mixture. And this makes sure that uh, when lever 2 or lever 5, which aren't in use, which are all the way in the back detente position, they're not giving an incorrect command to the system that could uh, alter or mess up our system. So we're starting with a clean slate, and that way there aren't any confusing messages being sent to the system. So again, just clearing all the inputs for both throttle, prop, and then also for a mixture. All right, so all the lever commands have been cleared out. Let's go ahead and start with uh, configuring these towards what we'd like a commercial two engine uh, levers to be. So we'll begin by heading on over to power management and we're going to start with our throttle. So we'll first go to throttle one axes. I'm going to click on the open command uh, button and I'm going to start scanning. And what I like to do here is slowly move that lever and the system will pick up on what input it's being given. And it looks like right axis Z is for throttle one. And as I move the lever, yeah, I'm getting feedback. Now for our throttle levers, we're going to have to reverse the axes to make sure when we go full throttle, the game realizes we want to go full throttles. Just something that applies to the throttles. Uh, don't ask me why, but it is something to be aware of. Throttle 2 will do the same, moving that lever, and that is right axis Y. Let's go ahead and confirm. Okay, it's working. Let's reverse that axis and full forward. Okay, looks good. So we've got our throttles taken care of. Next, I'm going to go to throttle 1 decrease. And what this uh, simulates is our thrust reversers. So as we bring throttle one all the way back to its uh, resting point or just before the detente, then we go to the detente and pull that thrust reverser back, it will decrease the thrust, uh, ergo uh, thrust reverser. So as you see, I'm scanning, I've gone to the detente and pulled that little handle. So it recognizes both commands. And this means when I've done both of those things, so all the way back and the thrust reverser lever, it will uh, enable our thrust reversers. If you do one uh, by itself all the way back or uh, the lever a little bit forward and that handle pulled, it won't enact. You have to have both in the correct position. So throttle one is taking care of for their thrust reversers. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for throttle two. I'll move lever two all the way back to the detente and pull that little lever 
signifying thrust reverser too. We've got that saved, and as you can see, when both are back, it's enabled. When I move just the lever forward, even though the, the little uh, thrust reverser latch is still down, it doesn't give the command. Next we're going to do is full throttle one, and I'm going to do this for Toga, the little red button on our piece. So as I was scanning, I hit that button. That is button 30, and I'm going to do this also for full throttle two. So when I push that button, it will make sure that engine one and engine two go to full throttle. So uh, this is a way to enact that takeoff go around scenario. As I push the button, you can see both commands eliminated. All right, so we've got throttle taken care of. Next, we need to go ahead and take care of our secondary control surfaces. We'll begin with the flaps, and just as we do with the throttle, I like to click on the command, start scanning, and slowly move the flap lever. All right, that's gonna be left axis Z. And as I'm moving it, confirmed. And uh, with the flaps, and also with the spoilers, we do not need to reverse the axes. So I confirm, do not reverse that axis. We'll do the same for our spoilers. I'm gonna start scanning, and let's slowly move that lever. We've got left axis Y. Validate it, and all right, we're getting input. So we have now configured all the levers we plan to use for a commercial two engine layout. We're going to go ahead, apply and save so we don't lose our progress. You see the spinning wheel on the right side and we are all set. So all that's left to do is go ahead and jump in the plane. All right, so here we are at San Francisco International Airport. We're in a Cessna Citation Longitude. We're on runway 01 right. And I'm going to begin my test with the spoilers. Okay, you can see them raising on the top side of the wings. We'll track those, and then let's work on the flaps. As I'm moving the flap lever, okay, you can see the change on the right side of the screen. And then also you can see on the trailing edge of the wings, those flaps are coming down. Next, let's go ahead and test engine one. Lever forward, okay. We see the change on our gauges on the left, and engine two confirmed. All right, let's go ahead and test the toga button. Both full throttles, okay, that works great. And then let's test our thrust reverser. So I'm gonna move lever throttle one all the way back and engage the thrust reverser button. And as you can see on the image of the airplane, uh, thrust reversers come out and our engine gauge is indicating. Engine two works as preferred also, okay. So we can confirm that the thrust reversers are working as we'd like. Let's go ahead and jump in the airplane and make sure everything is operating as we would prefer. I'm going to uh, pan us down to the levers. Let's go ahead and test our speed brake. We'll go ahead and move that lever right now. Okay. And then let's go ahead and test our flaps. On the far right side, you'll see the flap lever slowly changing position. Flaps look good. Let's go ahead and test engine one. Moving forward, all right, let's test engine two. Looking good. Let's test our thrust reversers. Pulling back on both, and they go to the most. Forward, aft, and then let's test our toga button. Both smoothly transition front and forward. Okay, so we've confirmed outside and inside the airplane. Our levers are doing exactly as we would like. So we are all set. Uh, from all of us here at Sporties, we hope this video was informative. Hopefully it shaved a little bit of time off of getting configured for the Honeycomb Bravo in a two-engine jet. Uh, we'll continue to provide videos as we create them. And as always, have fun digitally flying.